happy, happy Monday, my fabulous vibers. Welcome back to my podcast where I believe that every woman deserves to craft the life she wants and the guts to go after it. We will share stories, facts, and opinions on various aspects of life to give you that kick in the ass to light you up and spread killer vibes every day 24-7. Today we have our favorite guest, my husband Russ. Oh Everyone loves him. I get, you know, I get so many DMs every time you come on my podcast, honey. Everybody loves it when you come and make a cameo. Oh I think, no! You know what? I think you have your own fan club. Thank you. It'd be nice if I got paid. <laughs> oh, you get paid. Don't you worry. Nah. About that. Don't you worry. So today, hon, you know what we're going to talk about today? I think what I think I do. So we're going to be talking about is marriage a business contract? Oh boy. Uh oh. I think two things, two of your favorite things in the world, marriage and business. Right. Yeah. Making money. <laughs> oh, so you make <laughs> money in both? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So, you know, in history, we do know that marriage became, began as an economic arrangement between two families. Some cultures still include that. They do like an exchange of dowry as a way of reserving the right to marry a certain person. I was thinking just about this the other day because you and I love watching Indian matchmaking. Right. And it sort of great show takes you back to that yeah. that idea of the arrangement of two families and this matchmaker who says in India we have two types of marriages. Mm -hmm. One is a marriage and mm -hmm. one is a love marriage. Yeah. The marriage in itself mm -hmm. for them is just considered arranged. Like yes. you don't even have to say the word arranged right. anymore. It's considered an arranged marriage. And nowadays, modern day Indians mm -hmm. or maybe Indians who live in America are looking for something f more fulfilling, more romantic, not right. so business oriented. You do remember she gives everybody like little bio datas, right? Where you look at their education levels, right. um, where they come from, their family origins. Right, right. And they're picked on the sheet so that everybody gets a sheet of paper and they yeah, see sure. who they like. And it's all based on paper, basically. Um, and we, we had one girl that we were just like, wow, this girl is just way too picky. I can't remember her name. Do you remember her name? Yeah, I don't remember her name, but she was from Houston. She was. Right. She was so picky. Right. And nothing could make her happy. Nothing made her happy. There was no candidate out there that was sufficient for her. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I guess maybe you kind of, you know, to be realistic, that's probably why she is where she is. Yeah. You know, because her <laughs> the matchmaker had said it, marriage and relationships are about compromise and flexibility right you're obviously not going to find somebody that's the mirror image of you and you wouldn't want that because that's boring yeah you want yeah, somebody yeah. to bring in another angle to your relationship and then another set of not necessarily values but another set of experiences right right, right. and nothing made her happy i think right. you were in maybe five minutes when you watched it and you said okay I, this girl yeah. I, she's on my last nerve already yeah, right <laughs> Anyway, I think it's sort of going back to where we talk a little bit about how marriage is a business contract and how they really consider that as a business contract. But I think it could be harmful if you're only looking at things on paper. I think if you were, you and I were to go back to 1998 and we were presented bio data, right. I don't think we would have been connected based no, on bio data, no, right? No, absolutely not. You and I were just so different and we came from such different backgrounds. Right. Also, we went to the same university and that's how we met. Mm -hmm. Your bio data it was different. Was so different. And, and even that matchmaker on the Indian show says the same thing. The bio data is just to start a conversation. Ultimately, you guys have to have chemistry that transcends any kind of analytics or algorithms that they can come up with. Yeah. That determines the two there has to be this vibe in the air that kind of makes sense and and uh, to you know to both uh, to both partners so yeah the bio data is only a stepping stone it's supposed to get you into the door but doesn't mean that the door is going to open so you have to kind of open the door on your own on your own right. yeah you and I are just so different in terms of how we met and who we became right. later on as 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 a as a marriage. Right. But you know, you being of mixed race, you your father's an Arab, right. your mother's from the Czech Republic. Right. You come from middle class family. You're the only child with college educated parents. Your parents are very highly educated. Um, you have a degree in economics, mm -hmm. philosophy. 
you are world traveled as well. You know, even right. when we first met, you were in your 20s, you were already world traveled and your family paid for your college education. Right. I'm sure that was in your bio data if I was to ever see your bio data. Sure. I, on the other hand, I'm the oldest of four kids from a Mexican immigrant family. Mm-hmm. I grew up in a really difficult neighborhood, mm-hmm. uh, attended college on grants and scholarships right. uh, to become an educator. If you were to pair us on what's on paper, I don't think we would have been a good fit. Yeah, unless the bio data get delves more into uh, the psychology and probably some values, which I haven't actually seen in that show. Yeah. But based on what you had mentioned, probably not. But I would assume that the bio data probably has something a little more detailed than that. But probably on the surface, on paper, I don't think we would have probably met. Yeah, and so I think that's sort of where people think about business contracts and businesses or marriage as a business because two people come in with such backgrounds and and, and, and you've been a partner in businesses yourself. You've had partners in the past and you have partners now. And I had a partner in business as well in another um, project that I had. I think if we would have seen things on paper, we would have probably not been partners if we would have really thought things through. Right. Yeah. So even, you know, going back to that show on Netflix with the uh, Indian couples and the girl from Houston, I remember one of the uh, prospects that the matchmaker had sent to that particular, uh, I can't remember her name, but was a guy that seemed to be the complete opposite of her. You know, he just started his career late in life. He was in his late thirties. He was, you know, well-spoken, articulate kind of guy, but didn't seem like he knew what he wanted until it was too late too much lack of maturity came but you know most very strong willed women that are very determined and very ambitious typically don't want a very ambitious or strong willed man they typically want somebody that's subservient to them not necessarily you know in the subservient where as a slave or whatever but subservient to the point where they don't want somebody stepping on their toes which or that, telling them what to do. What telling them what to do. Yeah. And she's looking for a guy that wants her to tell him what to do. But uh, I think ultimately she's fooling or kidding herself because she wants somebody that just kind of goes along with whatever she decides. Mm-hmm. And I think that guy was a perfect candidate for her. And I think that she needs to introspect and really delve back into who she is uh, in order to, uh, you know, be successful in finding somebody. So... Also, I think going back into how um, we were able to match with each other because we had common values, we probably didn't have the same upbringing, but our values were very much exactly, almost exactly the same. We had the same idea about work ethic. I think we both pretty much, and again, I talked to, to, to my producer Arlo about this, how Gen Xers are just so committed to working their ass off in something forever because there's a there's a payback at the end. Right. And I think you and I lived through that the first 20 years of our marriage is right. where we lived to work, work, work. Right. And the younger generation, it's, a, it's an episode we're going to be working on next time on talking about millennials and how they see a work-life balance different from what we would see it in terms of that. So for us, that's our connector. You right. knew that I wasn't lazy. I knew right. you weren't lazy. We had ambitions. We were super driven right. even back then in our early early we, life we had similar philosophies similar of, pra- philosophies. of practicality of you know work exactly. ethic right we didn't like to waste our time with things that weren't going to work or they're out of our reach or out of our scope mm-hmm. you know we made we we concentrated on things that we were good at and we also tried to evolve at the same time and better ourselves and you know some things on the fringes but we didn't uh, jump around from one thing to another yeah we were we, super, we stuck super with super some, consistent we, we, we stuck with something we yeah. committed to it and then we did everything we could to achieve the goal at the end. Yeah. Right. And so I think that's part of where business comes in. There's right. a common goal. And the common goal for business is to make money, ultimately, right? Yep. I mean, yeah, you're, it's, 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 the, it's, you're, it's the sole motivation of a business is to be profitable. Exactly. Right. So for us, as our mm-hmm. marriage, we were having that same goal, was to right. have money and right. to have the money because mm-hmm. we had things that we wanted for ourselves. Yep. So you set up, let's say, a business plan. Mm-hmm. And in your business plan, you decide, this is what we're going to be working on. This is going to be our mission. This right. is going to be... Um, 
what we invest our, right. our money on and we re, our returns. Every time we make right. money, where do we put the money back on? Right. And a marriage works very much the same way. Yeah, because as yeah. we go through life, we mm-hmm. think about things in terms of, okay, we're going to have kids. What is that going to, you know, what does that entail in terms of, of a business contract? Mm-hmm. The kids coming in into the marriage. Sure. That changes the dynamic. Yeah, it does. Significantly. It changes the equation. It changes right. the equation. Right. Thank you. So I think that's something that we, we don't really talk about. It's not so romantic, mm-hmm. you know, and I think people who date nowadays want the romanticism. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I think a marriage is a lot like a business contract. Yeah, for the most part, it is. It's I mean, there is obviously emotional components that uh, that obviously can't be quantified as you can quantify in the business. Of course, there's going to be some math whiz that comes out says you can put an algorithm to an emotional deal. But, you know, reality of those there's in, in, you can't really put a numerical value on the emotional aspect. There has to be a there has to be a mental connection as well, not just a physical connection. And those things are hard to quantify. But for the most part, you know, I think a successful marriage is communication. It's flexibility. It's it's uh you know, it's like what you had mentioned. It's a, it's a contract. I mean, because in just like in any business contract, you and if you have a partner, if you don't have a partner, but if you have a customer, you have to make it work because everybody's coming in from a different angle. Your wife's coming in from a different angle. Your husband's coming in from a different angle. And and I think in order for it to be successful, like in a business, you have to be able to give a little, take a little, to be flexible, take the middle of the ground approach. Right, right. And I think as a business, you also have partners. You're always looking at what each partner is bringing to the table. Yes. How much money they invested. Right. How much energy they've invested into right. the business proposal. Right. Um, if they're coming in, I know from knowing you for 20 years, mm-hmm. every time you take on a business partner, you always look to see what else can they add value right. to this partnership that's right. not just money. I right. think for you, it's always about can they do labor? Right. Can they make phone calls? Do they have a network of right. people that they can bring in? But in, I, but in terms of a marriage, yeah. In order, in you know, to apply what you had just said in terms of a marriage, the value is, for example, you know, if one particular uh, partner is good at one thing and then the other partner is good mm-hmm. at something else, mm-hmm. you kind of let that partner take the lead on that, yes. and then let them let them, uh, you know, do. Their thing, and I and I think that as long as there's an understanding that they're good at something, don't don't necessarily step on their toes. And I think if if, if you if there's a lot of ego, a lot of pride in those kinds of things, and you're not doing the right thing, then I think that's gonna that's always it's in, it's inefficient. Exactly. Right. And I think that's something that you and I really were really good at when we first yeah. met and we first got married is that we knew what we brought to the table. We knew what I could contribute in terms of our marriage and mm-hmm. what you were able to contribute in right. terms of our marriage. Right. And it wasn't just a, I don't think we saw it as a contract back then. I think it became a, it doesn't even become a contract. I think you just kind of think of it in well, those terms yeah. later on. Well, if a contract is defined by putting a signature but to a, a piece marriage, of But a marriage, you do sign something, don't well, you? you, you <laughs> a marriage okay, license. Okay, all right, so. <laughs> um, you do. I mean, a marriage yeah. is a legal is a legal entity, right? Because in the eyes of, for example, the IRS, of the state, of yeah, the state, or the IRS, IRS yeah. it's all it's all very legalized. They can care less about the emotional side of it. So, in a sense, <laughs> marriage is a business contract, whether you like it or not. But it's obviously more complex and a, a, more of a gray area than just simply black and white. Yeah. But, but I didn't actually. See, you don't actually sign. You know, maybe there might be some folks out there. Obviously, prenups and postnups are very defined. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about a prenup. Let's talk a little bit because right. that also comes in where we talk a little bit about what is a prenuptial agreement. And that's a private agreement between a couple. They sign this before they get married right. and it sets forth a division of their assets. Right. What assets they come in mm. you know, to the marriage right. with and then how many of those grow in the marriage and then what they get at the end if there's a divorce. The post-nuptials are contracts that are better known as after your marriage. Mm-hmm. You know, you can determine right. the division of a couple's money, property, right. and that usually happens before a divorce or if there's a death of, of, of the spouse. The post nup usually happens if there's a gain of asset value that wasn't there before the marriage. Mm-hmm. So if you, for example, came across, let's say, you became a famous uh, rock star or something like that, and you weren't that before the marriage, and then you're kind of, you have your doubts about the other your other significant other uh, 
taking some of those assets and those are usually all very psychological you know those things that mm-hmm. de- determine the prenup and the postnup mostly the postnup is mm-hmm. that you're not feeling that there's a lot of honesty or, or you know I'm not a, I'm not a family therapist I'm not trained in that I'm just going based yeah, on kind based of on your experience. experience and maybe some common sense right yeah. and so you know if you have a family therapist I'm sorry if you have a postnup it's mostly that you came across something but you don't you don't necessarily trust a significant other to do the right thing after you you ascertain this greater wealth and assets yeah right. yeah so i guess it's not as romantic if you see it that way <laughs> i don't know do kids nowadays I, I, i want my producer to jump in real quick right are you guys seeing marriage as a contract or is y'all seeing it more as ever romantic i want to be married happy 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 Um, actually, I think most of us are looking at it in a very balanced way. I would say that um, a lot of people talk about it in the romantic way and they also put in the aspect of your own identity, like what you bring in the marriage mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. And it could be ranging from your professional life, your financial situation, to your emotional past right everything everything yeah um do you think that's why a lot of young people are not getting married and they're just living with people with with another person because that happens a lot and they're not having big weddings anymore they're thinking smaller more practical yes uh right now the hookup culture is something that has been very criticized on the over the past years but it's precisely because of the same thing Uh, very sex in the city life where like the girls ask themselves like why can't we find a single man that's worth it because no person that has like all of this different all of these different achievements and yeah. risks, including the girls yeah. nobody wants to settle down just like that not with somebody who's not worth it yeah. and nowadays since we see it in a more balanced way in a more like all of these different aspects are more openly discussed it's more yeah. like we don't want to take on that responsibility that we know we're not going to be able to meet. Exactly. And, But yeah. would you say, Arlette, that the social media, the availability of the platforms has created a market that makes it easier for people that want to date or find someone it's obviously easier right because for example when Alicia and I grew up and in, in, as a Gen Xers we didn't have any of that available to us so to find somebody was more effort you had to go you had to you had to get a hookup a recommendation from a friend they put you together right yeah I know that may sound ancient to you but you know you get friends that put you together. you had to you had to work for it you had to come across somebody physically and meet them and talk to them here find you, a way to just here yeah, you can now swipe right or swipe left or whatever it's called <laughs> on the computer and you get to salute so you now have this greater yeah. availability so the effort to find somebody is easier but at the same time it's also easier to dismiss somebody because there's also because it's easier to find somebody again because if I had to dis- if I had to start all over with a relationship I means I'd have to go out there and meet somebody and that yeah. takes time and effort yes um, so we all know about Tinder Uh, Tinder is a the go-to app when you want to find a hookup. Like, there is nothing else to find on Tinder. Tinder. There's also Bumble. There's Hinge. But do I, the people that sign up for those know that that's what they're for? For Tinder, yes. Yeah. If you sign up for Tinder, you know that you're only getting. On a Bumble, do the girls really think they're getting a relationship out of that? Maybe because Bumble is okay. more decided on what the girl wants to do. Like she's the, the one guys, that says the. She's the one who swipes right on the guy, and okay. until she starts a conversation, you can both start speaking. Got it. Okay. And on Hinge, it's only they only give you like three different questions that you need to answer, and from that you you establish desirability for that person. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, But yes, it's both functional. However, uh, it's both it's it's it is functional, and it's way more efficient than <laughs> than, than the way it used to be. But it's uh, the downside. It the downside is that it makes things so unromantic. Right. It makes makes things um, very platonic on the surface. Yes. Right. Yeah. Superficial. Superficial. Yeah, it makes it hard to find. 
right. the person you want because you will dismiss them by what you're seeing. Yes. And not only that... Um, because you can just always go back home and then get back on the app and then try it again, right? Exactly. And, then, and, and it also makes it superficial. I've heard a lot of criticisms about people criticizing the profile pictures people put in those apps. Oh, they do that? Yeah, because oh, you, okay. you put a whole collection of pictures and you expect to <laughs> oh, see so the re- best there's, of there's the re- person. There's reviews <laughs> on these apps? Yeah. Oh my God, really? <laughs> there are. Oh my goodness! Really, so Imagine you get to read, that. So I, I've oh never, obviously, I've never looked at a dating app. So you're telling me that there's there are reviews on dating apps yes. of, of the people like this guy was a schmuck or he he stood me up or something to that effect. And I have heard of those. Yes. Oh my like, god! Wow. If you ever find this user, don't follow him. Or See that like, that's that's part of the problem. Or can I just tell you? Right. My friend posted some pictures of married guys that were on these apps. Oh. So that's a whole other ball game. Mm. These guys that are married and are posting their photos on these apps, and these girls are like, "Hey, I know this guy. That mm. guy is married to my friend." Yes. Oh, okay. You so know. There's, so there's there's some, there's a good of side course, to that. Of course, right, there's right. like everything right. to it. But I am wondering if younger people are seeing marriage as a business <laughs> contract right. or a business decision in terms right. of because let's be honest, women at a certain age, let's say she gets to the thirties, right. she says, "I want to have kids. I'm going to find me a right. guy who can give me." Right. Kids and give me a good life. Right. They don't give a shit sometimes if that they even like the guy. Mm-hmm. They don't care if they're even sexually attracted well, to him. Well, from what I just if he has a good job, right? If he can give them the kids and give them the life, they're probably gonna marry him right. because it's a contract for them. Yeah. They don't necessarily well, it's, it feel seems, an attraction. It seems to start off as a contract from what Arlette had just said. I mean, if you get all this information on people and then you can you can customize who you are and yeah. then you can listen at their customize or their itemize of who they are and then it's 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 already on paper. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of purely just executing the contract by meeting them instead of actually signing on it. And yet I would still say that the dating process is just as complicated because I when I did go on dates with guys that I met on these apps, it was still just as awkward. Um, the only bad thing about it though is that even though these people like you said they customize their profile right. they tell you what they're supposed right. to like and then you meet them and they're not that right. bad at all so that's that's the problem is that you're now expecting them instead exactly. of getting to know them and it's just that getting to know people right. with, without information creates a sense of lower expectations right yeah. and then you have it on paper and then you have these higher expectations and they don't, and, meet, and, and they don't meet those expectations you're already disappointed and yeah, and then you find out that you're probably smarter than them, right. or that they have more interest in Star Trek than Star Wars, etc., yeah. etc. Et <sighs> Those guys Star Trek and Star Wars. Don't I get swear. oh. <laughs> Don't get started, I mean, honey. That's a whole other tangent. If you're in your thirties and you're still into Star Trek and Star Wars, that's a kid. You, that's a movie you send your kids. You take your kids to at the movie theater. You have grown out of that. Okay, place. so let's go back and regroup. You need to grow out of Star Trek. We are in our forties, but right. we really are like in our fifties. Right, but even I mean, it's just like it's like you, your yeah. kids ask you, "Hey, what's Star Trek?" I said, "Well, you know what? It's a it's a movie I watched. It was a series that I watched when I was a kid." Honey, but they're obsessed. Obsessed with it. They're the kids are obsessed. The kids, oh, oh, yeah, the kids. The young people. Right, but there's, there's this whole clique, this whole, <laughs> this whole, what's it called, fan club of yes, Star Trek. Yes, yes. Oh, they do the Comic Con. They do all they of it. Give me a, give me a, <laughs> so yeah. conversation. Give me a break. <laughs> That's where our age is showing, Arlette. We're much older than you, and that's where we come from. Let's just be honest. In your 20s, I can still kind of get that, but once you hit 25... No, not when you hit 25, you finish 30, college, yeah, you need yeah. to give up Star Trek and Star Wars and all the other Comic-Con <laughs> bullshit that's out there. <laughs> Is that bleep? Can you bleep? That? No, 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 no. We're not bleeping you at all. We're keeping you in. <sighs> and all the craziness you talk about. I don't know. I think it's really, really cool to kind of think of 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 how marriages can be, I guess, constructed to be like a business contract. Because I think we know couples. 
we're not going to say, we're not going to talk about it. Oh, no, we know couples not. that feel like they are business contracts, that right. there's really no romanticism in the right. couple. There's really no true, like, attraction. Like, you you go home and you're like, okay, they're not screwing. They're definitely not, right. you know, There's no sexual relations. There's no sexual tension. Right. You could just tell they're in it for, she gets the fantastic house and the kids and he gets the wife at home. Right. But there's no right. like serious Well, I think it's probably team. died down because I think I think the key component is flexibility and in flexibility I think is to expand on that it doesn't mean that you have to just kind of give or take but you have to constantly be changing and evolving in your relationship as you get older you obviously your interests change and then you have to do things different to keep a marriage uh, you know on on the on, not on the edge but on interesting and mm-hmm. I think a lot of marriages that we know are simply there just for their kids. They're waiting mm-hmm. for their kids to grow up. They're waiting for the kids to get through college where they can kind of stand on their own two feet. And I think after that, I think the dominoes will fall. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you measure the failure of a marriage in comparison to the failure of a business? Well, that's not it's, you know, the, they're both they're both equally the same. They're both failures. Right. Because, you know, a lot of people think failure of the business is is, you know, you can kind of move on, but but the failure there's in, loss of money. There's basically. loss of money, but mm-hmm. also a divorce is a failure of the same kind of commitment. You commit to a business relationship, you commit to a relationship with someone else, whether it has some business components or ROI incorporated in it. But either way, it's a failure, and I think they're equally the same. I don't think there's much difference between the failure of a marriage or a business, but you know, it, it's it's not it's it's a very it's a loaded question because it's not a black and white answer is there's no it's it's a very great question some people say i'm so happy i got out of that relationship i'm free now i'm i'm excited to be moving on and there's there's contentment for yeah yeah yeah, yeah, so yeah it, over, it overshadows the failure even though they may not necessarily admit to it but i think these the ability to be out of something and free is 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 a is defined a success for them but let me bring in the emotional component because yeah, in a business, when the business fails, there's emotion. But when a marriage fails, I think there's a heavy heaviness in the emotion. Not only that, but the family emotions. You carry on the kids. Right. I think in business, you kind of tend to think of it in more of like a, you know, black and white situation. Sure. I know there's grays, but you think right. of it, okay, so we failed in that. Okay, well, we'll pick up and we'll move on. In a marriage, I think a lot of times for the women, they see themselves as like, okay, who's going to want me? now right. now that I've become a divorcee right. now that I'm not you know that well it's a divorcee can just simply just find another divorcee and they can relate I know but for them in their mind they don't they I'm not I don't think they're thinking of it that way I don't think they're thinking it in such practical ways I think they're thinking it in more emotional ways in business we tend to take the emotion out of business because you do say you don't mix business with pleasure you don't you don't mix no. emotions with business no, in just, a marriage no, emotions I, I, are I always a part because of it business to be successful in the business you have to be married to the business and in order for it to work it's we I've, I've been through it for 20 years in the auto repair business it's honestly another wife it's another child for me it demand it demanded 90% of my time of 70 hours out of the week and even when it, I wasn't there I was still thinking so let me ask so, you so that leads to it's a case by case situation for each couple for each you know some some women will say you know I'm emotionally distraught some women will say I'll never find somebody again the same thing for a guy each case you know the yeah. guy looks at himself physically and he wants he says you know I'm out of shape you know I'm, I'm bald I'm, I'm, I'm great here yeah. and so they it's it's not simply just saying that it's some people will be happy to be out of a marriage some people won't be happy to be in a marriage some people will look at it as something I can get through some people will take a year or two before they can move on but let's just put it this way if you had failed at your business let's just say let me just finish the question yeah, yeah. if you have failed at your business would you have been as devastated about failing at your business as if you you and I had failed in our marriage well you know it's knowing you know me I'm not going to answer the question and say yes or no it's just not if I had if I had nine businesses I was successful and I failed at one I'll say whatever I failed at one you know I have I have a great track so record. the business but, doesn't really hold that right. much because, weight in because, terms of your marriage so you really aren't married to the business well it's 
it, it depends if you were successful in the other marriages. In my case, if I if I took a stab at one business and I failed at it, and I put everything I had into the business, every single penny, I, I worked 120 hours a week, yeah. I did everything I possibly that mm-hmm. I was capable of, and I failed at, I think mm-hmm. I'd be miserable. Mm-hmm. Because if I, if I thought if I convinced myself that I, I could succeed at this, it just didn't work out. I would I would probably be upset about it. But it, I can. But if you're successful, seven or eight different investments or whatever, and one doesn't necessarily go right, you kind of chalk it up as you know. But what if that's the only business you have? That's what I just said. If it was only business that you had, then it's it would probably be devastating. But some people will tell you, I tried my hand at a business, it didn't work out. I'm just going to go back in the corporate world. And they'll they'll just shrug it off. It's a case by case, individual by individual situation. I, I, I people handle things differently. Mm-hmm. Some people can just shrug something off real easily, and some people, you know, dwell on it for a long time. Everybody's yeah. hardwired. Yeah. And I think Uniquely. going back to the premise, it's you know sometimes we have to really think about marriage as an arrangement. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a negotiation of two parties coming together um, and then determining what's going to be the ROI. What is that return on your investment? Is it going to be successful kids? Is it going to be a long-term marriage? Is it going to be, you know, what is it? Every couple, I think, has a different return on their investment. I don't think every couple has the same thing in their mind. No, some people, as they marry, you know, some, some families, some marriages want five or six kids you know we decided for two kids and we spaced them out because they're very practical people we didn't want two kids in college mm-hmm. at the same time we didn't want two teenagers at the same time mm-hmm. we didn't want them you know learning how to drive at the same time we spaced it out intentionally but some some folks are kind of more I would say center right or right brain leaning and they can handle five or six kids that's not who we are and, and marriage to them is about the size of the family and a lot of you know family nights and a lot of you know board games and stuff like that and that works for them I think one thing we really haven't discussed it and I think it's very important and it comes back to business arrangements and it comes to marriage contracts and in mar- contracts in every way is if it's an equal partnership between the two parties right. Well, I think a successful marriage should be an equal partnership, not equal necessarily at all times, though. I think over the long term, a marriage needs to be come back always to the center, but not all the time is it equal. And I think what we hear from a lot of our friends is that there's a lack of equality, lack of effort in the marriage, that one particular spouse is doing this, this and this, and the other spouse doesn't do absolutely anything, doesn't contribute to their relationship. You know, no one no one forces you to get married in this country. There's mm-hmm. That's the one thing about the United States is that there are no social stigmas if you're not married. Mm-hmm. If you're a bachelor, you're not a bat. If you're a bachelorette and you want to stay that way for the rest of your life, no one's holding a gun to your head and says you have to do it. That's not necessarily the case in a lot of parts of the world. You know, like we were talking about at the beginning of the show, you go to the Far East, you right. go to Africa, mm-hmm. you go to uh, the Middle East. You know, those things are kind of almost they're required, they're requisite in life. You must find somebody, and that's the thing about here is that you don't have to find somebody. So if you're going to find somebody, if you want to have an equal partner I think like anything else you need to be good at it and the success to being good at it is to compromise and to be flexible absolutely I, I, I practiced that philosophy in business I didn't apply I didn't treat every customer the same way I adjusted and custom tailored my approach to the needs of my clientele and I think that's how you should apply yourself in all situations in life because not all situations are equal yeah 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 absolutely and I think in, in every situation there is there is a there is a different couple in every situation some couples find that one way works for them Uh, other couples find that another way works for them and I think it's really important that we maintain a sense of we don't make blanket statements about marriages and blanket statements about business associations. Right. I think blanket statements or, or generalizations yes. are very right. useless. They're useless in this time and age. Right. I think everybody comes into things in, in, in a different way and in different and they negotiate the terms of their of their relationship. 
every time you're going out or doing things, you're negotiating with that partner. Right. Hey, what restaurant are we going to? Well, I want to do Chinese. No, I want to do Mexican. You're negotiating at that point. Yeah, right. Uh, you have kids. How are we going to raise our kids? Well, I think we should raise our kids this way. No, I think we should negotiate. We should, you know, raise our kids that way. You're negotiating all the right. time. It's a matter of negotiation and thinking of things in that in that sense. Right. However, you what, and what I if, are super if, practical people, so we see things right. in very practical terms. ways. And I think right. one thing we did from the beginning is we really discussed our terms right. and what we were willing to put into the right. relationship and we were right. willing to get out of the relationship. For example, you were you were raised Catholic, not necessarily practicing Catholic, as some mm-hmm. people just mm-hmm. devise cafeteria, cafeteria Catholic. I grew up with atheist parents, even though I was baptized when I was a kid. Right. You know, their their views on religion had changed as their relationship my parents relationship evolved mm-hmm. and um, and you know I compromised I went to a Catholic church my yeah, father you got had, married with right, me my, in a Catholic church my yeah. father had my my father had compromised with you as absolutely as stubborn and hard-headed as he could be because mm-hmm. he saw the value as a practical person as who you were as a person right he says this is a good partner for my son and I'm not going to get too bent over exactly. the religious component of it because yeah, it's yeah, purely yeah. the way he viewed it and the way I viewed it it was just part of the marriage that day yes. it was just part yes. of the process yes. the part of the procession right Is I almost would have felt that if I had a judge there doing it it would have not felt right I, yeah. as practical yeah. and as you know as as as, grainy, as down to earth as you as are you you're be, extremely down to earth I just wouldn't want a yeah. judge there yeah. who I didn't know personally yeah. you know giving me the rights of something I think I think it, it was more romantic was the Catholic component of the yeah. church and all that, even though I didn't believe in any of that stuff. Right? I know, and I think for you, and not, not only your dad, honey, it was part of your mom because right. your mom was someone that really wanted to see you get married yes, in the church. Right, right. Your aunt, your 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 family really wanted to see that part of you, and I think that that goes back to negotiations right. flexibility. again and flexibility. Right. Is you said, hey, I, it's just something I'm not going to fight. Right. It's something I'm going to go with. I just think it, that if you constantly yeah. try to find the person identical to yourself, yeah, that's not you're gonna never going to find that. It's, never. it's difficult. It's a small niche of people out there. Mm-hmm. Wow. What a good conversation. <laughs> I right. think we could go on for uh, how long has this already been? Already an hour, maybe. We're going on for uh, we, we could talk forever right. on this subject. Rose and I talk about this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when this came up, I thought, oh my god, this guy could totally bring in a beautiful perspective because I don't know, man. We always just see eye to eye on everything. Yeah, we do. I mean, that's what, that's <laughs> that's why we click is that you got to see eye to eye on stuff. Yeah. And, you know, you have to you have to compromise. And guess what? Even though we have negotiations, there's still a lot of love. Yeah, there's a lot of love. A lot of love. A lot of kissing. Well, a lot you know, of hugging. You know, I get I get this. You know, the other day I was I was Red you know I'm, I'm, I'm taking uh, <laughs> yeah. hates that part. Uh, but whatever, I compromise, right? You do, you do. You know, I was, I was, I was doing these wine classes. These are different levels of wine, and put some certification behind the, you know, the, the, the bragging. <laughs> and so I had, you know, some friends that came up to me. Oh, why are you doing this wine class? And he's like, Well, what, what are you going to do for it? And I said, Well, maybe I own a winery. Maybe it, maybe it's a crapshoot out there that I may not get to something like hey, that. Hey, it's been a pipe but dream of ours it's, it's a pipe for years. Dream, whatever, yeah. and it may not happen. But it's just the fact that you want to constantly better yourself. You want to evolve as a as a person. You want to learn something new, and that's the thing is you want to learn. And and the, having the mentality of constantly wanting to learn something new, I think, is a fundamental foundation for a relationship. Oh my is gosh. Because you can constantly wanting to know yes. the person you're with all the time from the <gasps> beginning. At the beginning. Oh my god, right. that's like a beautiful because, nugget. Because if you are thinking that your ways are the only ways, or your culture is the only way, there's there's so much value out there from other people that can bring an experience into your life because yeah. you know I was more I'm a less I'm a less of a heartfelt kind of guy you're more of a heartfelt 
kind of girl, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you bring that kind of heart to my relationship. You make me more sensitive, more sympathetic, you know, more emotional from sometimes. Yeah. And I kind of brought the more of the cognitive practicality to your component. And yeah. you accepted that and I accepted, you know, what you brought in. That's yeah, it was a give and take. It was a give and take. It was a give and take. And I think right. that's a really beautiful nugget that we right. can end on because uh, I think it's so important that you right. said that correctly and you ended this segment the most right. beautiful way. It is about that right. give and take. Right. And it really is a no- negotiation between mm-hmm. two people. It's like a business, maybe. I don't know. Some people will think that's crazy. For us, it's practical and it makes sense. Right. But it really is, you know, growing together and finding things about that other person or learning things about that other person and maybe teaching them something right. new and unique and yeah. different. Yeah, you have to constantly evolve. you got to better yourself as a person. Always. Right. And a marriage evolves. And a lot of people grow out of a marriage because they evolve involved in different aspects in different ways and maybe one went one way the other went the other way when it's together I think it's really beautiful and very heartfelt and 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 people can see that because they say oh wow you guys have like grown together like you guys met when you were 21 23 yeah we could have been the type of people that I went one way you went another but we grew up together we decided we were gonna just find interest and we were both gonna enjoy and yeah. we grew yeah. in terms of that and the other thing is that yes. you, you have to you have to have a thick skin in this world not everything that you do is you're always going to be successful at I tried you know getting a pilot's license and I got 20 out of 30 hours out of it but you know I didn't necessarily finish it it didn't work out for me I had you know but don't let that bother you so does a thick skin apply in a marriage it and does. a business yes it, you in both to, you have to have a thick skin I mean, that's, that's, you, you can't let things bother. You have to shake things off, wake up the next day, and move on. And get going. Right? Because you're dealing with another human being. Whether it's in business, whether it's in a marriage, you can't let the little stuff always bother as long as there's the big pictures involved where you realize, well, she yeah. said this or he said this, but then he did 80% of the other things that I had asked him to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, as long as there's more positive than negative, then don't, don't, don't. Don't no. dwell on the little no. right. bullshit. Right. You know, Russ comes always with does these nuggets, and I love it, and that's why he has all of these fan fan clubs and like groupies following him because they are like, I want to know what Russ thinks about this. Can you ask him what he thinks of? Oh, by the way, I'll let let me just tell you, my parents don't ask me for my advice; they ask for his advice. So let's just let's just go that route. What does Russ think? Anyhow, oh, yeah, what does he think? I'm like, what? Well, you didn't ask me what I think. Anyhow, thank you so much for following us along thank today and being here thank you honey for being yeah. such a beautiful component to our podcast you always bring it and i'm so grateful that you bring all of yourself to the conversation again are we thinking in terms of marriage are we thinking in terms of business contract that is up to you you make that decision for yourself you're out dating all we're doing is giving you guys a little bit of information a little bit of our perspective we've we're turning 20 years married this november and i think we can give you guys a little perspective on what it takes to be married for such a long time and be married and being happy not only married but happy as well so it's a business contract it's a marriage it's an arrangement of sorts but it's interestingly enough is it an arranged marriage or is it a business contract what do you think let us know give us your feedback i want to hear from you tell us what you think and also share us with your friends let us know what's up and if you want to hear anything from us send us a dm send us some conversation we want to know from you see you guys soon